In this video, we'll cover some intermediate level mimic design practices you can use to keep your design work moving along smoothly. Today, we'll only be working with the canvas root type as grids become extremely complex, so we'll cover those in another video. Let's get started by creating a new mimic. I'll change it to use a regular mimic, then give this the name Canvas Mimic. We're already familiar with adding elements to your design surface, so this time we're going to be looking at some of the additional features you can utilize in the designer. Before we go any further, let's add some elements to this canvas so we can work with them. I'll start out by grabbing a radial gauge. Next, let's add a rectangle to our canvas. Now we have a few elements we can manipulate and change on our design surface, so let's take a look at how you can order these. If you look at the toolbar, there's four buttons here you can use to order your elements. Send to back, move backwards, move forward, and bring to front. Both send to back and bring to front behave how you'd expect, where the selected element is either sent to the lowest or highest Z index in your document. Move backwards and move forward will increase or decrease your Z index by one based on the one that you've chosen. To demonstrate this, let me position this rectangle over the gauge slightly. Then, I'll select the gauge and press the Move Forward button in the toolbar, and now our gauge is in front of the rectangle. Now that we've seen how you can order objects, let's take a look at how you can align them with each other. If I select these two elements, you'll see that the button to the right of the Bring to Front button is now enabled. Clicking on this button will show us a bunch of different options you can use to align your controls and elements. For example, if I choose the Align Centers option, I can then center these two horizontally with each other. There's a bunch of other options you can choose in here as well, so while we're in here, let's align these vertically with each other by selecting the Align Middles option. That way, we can look at the next feature, which is grouping objects. When you group things together, you're wrapping them in some type of container. This container ensures that when it's moved, the position of the elements inside it are preserved. As it stands right now, if I go to move this gauge, the rectangle won't stay behind it. If I select both of these elements, then right click, you'll see an option called Group. There's two options you can use, a canvas and then a view box with a canvas. Without going into a lot of detail, a canvas will not resize its content. If a canvas is wrapped by a view box, then the canvas and its content will be scaled and resized with the view box. So I'll go ahead and choose this view box option so we can see how this works. Not only is the rectangle staying behind the gauge now, but when I resize it, both the rectangle and the gauge are resized accordingly. As a side note, if you want to learn more about both the canvas and the view box, I'd recommend visiting the MSDN library online to read more about these. Now that we have some stuff grouped together, we need to be able to edit the content of this group. To do this, you can select the group, then right-click and select Edit Layer, or you can expand the document tree and select your elements from there. Now I can access everything in this group. So I can do things like change the fill on this rectangle, for example. When you've finished editing the elements in your group, you can simply click elsewhere on the design surface to exit the layer editing mode. Next, I'll delete this group quickly, and then I'm going to add a rectangle and an ellipse to the design surface. We'll need these for the next part of our video. Now let's look at path operations. Path operations allow you to do things like join, subtract, and intersect shapes with each other to form new shapes. Before we do anything though, 
I need to move this ellipse so that it's slightly overlapping the rectangle, so I'll do that now. When you have two shapes selected, you'll see that there's three buttons in the toolbar to the left of the Z-index buttons that have become enabled. These are the Join, Subtract, and Intersect commands. Clicking the Join button will join your shapes into a single shape. Now I'll do a quick Control Z to undo this and we can look at Subtract. The Subtract command will subtract the top shape from the bottom one. So if I click the button, you'll notice that the ellipse has been subtracted from our rectangle where it overlaps. Now I'll do another Control Z to undo this and we can look at the Intersect command. The Intersect command will intersect the shapes with each other meaning only the area that's overlapping between them will be left. If you're feeling creative, you can also draw freehand shapes with the polygon and polyline shapes like this. There's also freehand polygon and polyline shapes that you can use as well. And, if you need more power, you can opt to use the path. If you draw the path out, you can then edit it by right-clicking and choosing the Edit Layer option. This will give you a bunch of options you can use to create various shapes in here. To demonstrate this, I'll quickly draw out a Bezier segment. When you've got your basic shape, you can adjust the curves by clicking on a point, then selecting the yellow anchor like this. Now you're ready to start using some of these more complex design techniques in your Mimic design. In closing, Status Enterprise is a powerful, easy-to-use tool that lets you design once and deploy multiple times. For more information about Status Enterprise and Mimic design, please visit us on the web at www.scada.com.